Hello GTY, your Pastor Brian is here. Welcome to Sunday Online Service and let us begin with a call to worship. Almighty and gracious God, it is a privilege to worship you today in this one in Christ family. May our praise be joyful, may our hearts be turned towards you, and may our souls be quenched with the waters of your word. We give you all glory and praise and gratitude this day and forever. Amen. This time, we're going to praise the Lord by singing a song, Jesus Loves Me, Hillsong, and Kayla is going to lead us in. confess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. This time, Chloe Lee from 12th grade is going to lead us in congregational prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for another wonderful Sunday and keeping us safe for another week. I pray as we get through this week, we continue to stay safe and healthy. I pray that you will work through Pastor Brian and share your word through him. And please give us the wisdom to understand what we learn and help us apply it in our everyday lives rather than just forget. God, today is Mother's Day. Thank you so much for all the loving mothers and parents out there. I pray that you will continue to watch over our families. Thank you, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, friends, this time we're going to bring our offering to God. Please place your offering into your boxes and baskets that you are supposed to prepare already. If you are done, friends, allow me to remind you that bringing offering to God is not about bringing a little portion of your material or your money that you have or you could have earned or received from somebody. It's about confessing that everything we have, we've been blessed and we are giving back to Him. Why? Because we're confessing that everything we have, they belong to God. And we are being thankful for His generosity, uh, for His provision, and for He sustains us. And we are asking Him to have such a heart towards Him and towards everyone who are in need around us so that we can share His love and grace and mercy to others as well. So if you are done, let me pray for this. Father God, we want to thank you for this offering. You have given to us so much that we can give back to you. But we are giving back to you not because we have a lot, although we may not have a lot in this world. Lord, we have so many things because we have you in our lives. Lord, allow us to be as generous as you are and your son was to us, so that we may also be generous to others who are in need of your love and mercy and grace and allow us to be wise enough to use this offering for expansion of your kingdom on this earth. Father, we love you, everything absolutely in our lives. They belong to you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now it's time for scripture reading and the passage for this week is coming from the book of Mark, chapter one, verses 21 through 28. If you are ready, Let's read aloud by enunciating each word. Okay, let me begin. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority he even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a sol solitary place where he prayed Simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. 
This is the word of the Lord. And everyone should say, Amen. Friends, today's sermon is named, God's Love Revealed in Jesus' Ministry. And I would like to start off with a question as always. Do people around you actually see you that you're a Christian? Friends, no offense, no disrespect intended. But yes, people can see you going to church every Sunday, every Friday. What about participating in different kinds of events at KCQ? Particularly speaking, right? Spring VBS, right? VBS, uh, summer missions or summer retreat with families, um, Christmas festivals, joy festivals, uh, like Hallelujah nights. What about youth retreat uh, in December and New Year's events? We have quite a lot. And let's say you participate in all of those things. I mean, people see you like for you. Uh, you know, being a member of church or going to church is a big part of your life. So people definitely can say, oh, you're Christian because you go to church. But friends, my question is, rather than all those things, which is very superficial and external, and I'm not saying you're doing it without your hearts to come to church, committing yourself uh, to the body of Christ as a member of this church, as a family of Christ or in Christ, and as a follower of Christ, child of God, I get it. You know, I don't question that, but do they really see you or do you live a life demonstrating God's love to others? I mean, when people ask you, hey, I totally get what you do. Uh, I know you have experienced that encounter with Jesus Christ, right? You st started understanding that you were a sinner and you now, like back then, believe that you need a Christ, a Savior. You... Uh, confess your sin you gave your life to him you accepted jesus as your savior master and now you are part of this church and you're a christian but although i appreciate that there is god how can you prove that the god really exists i mean where is love i mean no offense i'm in a good manner I and mean, people can ask you that in a good manner they're asking you don't tell me that there is god don't tell me that god loves us don't tell me that jesus died for me to save me show me that God exists show me that God really really loves me show me that Jesus really died for me I'm not trying to give you a hard time but I want to feel that I mean I'm so curious but I don't see what you mean by that friends how can we actually answer to those questions of course we are not the ones who can change their lives. We are not the one who can change their hearts, but we can definitely be used as a tool for Christ's work to saving souls. Is that right? But unless we are truly try to like truly, truly and humbly try to or seek or endeavor to leave out what we have been taught by Christ Jesus throughout throughout our lives in KCQ or just generally as a Christian, there's no way we can actually show and demonstrate God's love to other people. And we need to see a perfect example of how to do that. And for us, fortunately, thankfully, there is a perfect example that is Christ Jesus. Amen? And according to the passage that we read, Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28, 35 through, through 42, we can say that there is God's love that has been revealed in Jesus' life, particularly and specifically saying in His ministry. So let's not delay it. Let's get right into it. How God's love has been revealed in Christ's life and ministry and how that love of God can be revealed through our life as Christ followers. First, God's love has been revealed in Jesus' word. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So friends, synagogue is a place where there were religious teachers who studied so hard the law they had received through Moses many many years ago when the ancestor of this Jewish people had been 
like delivered right out of Egypt from their oppressor. Um, God had given them a set of law um, by which they can represent how righteous God is, how faithful God is, basically to present who God is to others, right? To represent the Almighty God, the righteous God, the one who should be worshipped by all nations. But they started having some sort of misconception. I mean, the, the Israelites, they started using this law that were given to them to use or to live out so that God can be represented. They used it to present, the, present themselves as the glorious one. And until the moment that Jesus appeared in front of them as the promised Messiah, they were so silly. They seemed to smart, but they were so silly they did not recognize Christ Jesus. And Jesus here, like graciously, teaches these people who thought to be smartest. And he presents himself as the Son of God. The only thing is people did not understand. But does not mean it does not mean God did not reveal his love towards his people. People were really short on their own understandings, thought to be uh, thinking that they are righteous. But God sent Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the promised one, for whom that they had been praying for and waiting for so many years, and spoke to them through Jesus Christ, the one who has authority and power to offer the salvation through his death. So as he was speaking to these people, God's love already has been revealed. And Jesus Christ, as he's presenting himself, the one who has authority over death, the one who came to defeat death, there is a love of God that has been revealed through his speaking, through his word. Think of the teachers of the law as a passionate reader who knows about book upside down, but they can only refer to chapters of the book and saying what was written in the book, but they cannot really say the intention of the, of the author of the book who wrote it. But, but think of Jesus Christ as, as the author of the book because he's the one who chose every phrase and, and, and the word that, that are written in the book. So he is the one who can actually authoritatively teach the book or the, every single word he has written because he is the author. So that's the situation, friends. So God, his love, always has been revealed through Christ because he wants us to know the truth. And of course, when it comes to uh, 27, uh, verse 27, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. God's word has a, such an authority that even impure spirits that seems impossible for us to overcome or defeat can be defeated and cast it out. So God's love revealed through Christ's uh, uh, words as it liberates us from our own misconceptions, faulty understandings, and also anything that actually holds uh, 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 in capture or in captivity. Either it's an impure spirit, it's our fear, either it's our, our worries and concerns and sufferings, it just liberates us. God's word liberates us. And that love has been revealed in Christ and his authority as a son of God. Point number two. God's love has been revealed in Jesus' humility. Mark chapter 1, verses 35 and 38. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Friends, when it comes to Korean church or Korean churches, people are questioning, why do you guys go to church that early in the morning, like 5 a.m., at latest 6 a.m., and you guys have a service every single day, like almost like every single day of the week. I mean, some churches, they have two days of breaks or one day of breaks, but usually they all, if it comes to Korean churches, they always have down prayers. Do you guys have experience of attending down prayers? I do even before I became pastor. I'm not being proud of that, but I think it's a beautiful tradition that Korean churches actually observe. But a lot of people question, 
where can we actually find is there any is there at least one passage that tells us about morning prayer we're not asking like you know to find the important i mean uh, the passage that would tell us the importance of morning prayer but is there any passage even telling us about the morning prayer friends mark chapter 1 verse 35 is the passage that gives us an example that we should actually do morning prayers dawn prayers look jesus in very early in the morning he got up he left his bed aside or behind he went off to a solitary place where he can be individually by himself and he prayed look we just learned in the first point that jesus as he was teaching these religious leaders not only he revealed the love of god in his word that was very authoritative but he actually revealed him as an authoritative figure as the messiah yes he was in the human body but he is god in the human body who came down to the earth to demonstrate the perfect example of living as a christ followers and of course ultimately to offer him as a sacrifice that can be a remedy to our sinful dilemma I mean, he had that authority, but he is God. And supposedly he doesn't really have to pray to anybody, but still, he prayed. He was so humble to before God, to pray to him, ask him, to guide him, lead him. And he was, he was becoming popular. He was becoming popular. The fame was very pervasive in his circle right now. People wanted to hear him and see him being taught by him. But yet he was focused on his relationship with God. He was so humble. And why is that? Because at the same time he was so focused on his goal and his purpose. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here, I'm not here to be praised. I'm not here even to be recognized. I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you sinners who are to die soon. But I don't want you to die because my Father's will is to save you, to reconcile to Him, to die instead of you, and pay the wage of sin, which is death, instead of you, to place you in the place of me, so that you can be loved, looked after by God, and receive the same affection that He had towards me, and be favored in His eyes, and be cold. And be actually adopted to God's family and be his household, be in the household. I'm here for that. So friends, God's love has been revealed in Jesus' humility. God did not have to sacrifice his big, beloved son, Christ Jesus. And Christ did not have to go through all the sufferings and 33 years of a long living just to be dead and crucified because he's, he wanted to save us, friends. He did not have to do that. And although he has had the authority and the power and the word, and he is a son of God who can provide and offer the salvation, the gift of eternal life, he still stood up very early in the morning because he knew he was getting to be busy. He was getting to be busy but as a lot of people will come after him, seeking his help, healing, provision, encouragement. So he consecrated himself, consecrated himself in his time to pray before God. Verse 38, Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Jesus Christ was not there in the, in the earth to be famous, to be recognized, like I said. So that's why when his disciples, Peter and his company, I mean, was looking for him and, and finally found Jesus and he was told, hey, there are people who are waiting for you. He said, I don't need all those fames. I'm here to save people. I'm here to heal people. I'm here to offer 
the message of gospel, the eternal life, the way to the guaranteed life in the presence of God. And I need to preach, I need to deliver the message of the eternal life to as many people as I need to, I have to. So he left everything behind. I'm pretty sure there are people who could treat Jesus and his disciples well by inviting them to fancy houses, offering them food and good accommodation. But he left everything behind, and meaning it was okay for him to sleep wherever he could, eat anything he could, but be focused on preaching the gospel, the message of eternal life to others who needed to hear him. God's love has been revealed in humanity. So friends, God humbled himself so much to love us and because of his humble but gracious and the love that he demonstrated, we are here and we are still breathing. And are we supposed to be humble? Are we supposed to stop relying on our power and, and, and just follow our own desires, like fleshly, humanly desires? Are we supposed to humble ourselves like to the level of Christ and just referring to, you know, like always you know, come before God and ask Him through our prayers? Lord, I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your enlightenment. I need your holding me with your mighty hands. I need you to help me to focus on your word. Friends, God has revealed his love in the most humble way he could. Lastly, friends, God's love has been revealed in Jesus' compassion. Mark chapter 1, verses 41 through 42. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. He said, Be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus was in Galilee. He was surrounded by a big crowd. And I'm pretty sure it could be hard for him to listen or hear a man coming after him or before him and begging, If you're willing, if you're willing, I can be healed. You know, if he was a regular man, he could just, just pass by, not paying attention to anyone. Just looking at those people who are being amazed by him. Because he would enjoy their fame. But like we learned already, Jesus was humble. And he was focused on his purpose, which is saving souls. Offering eternal life. Healing. And his heart was compassionate. He had compassion in his heart. So when the leper came up before him and said, Lord, I recognize you as the Holy One, and if you want, I can be healed. And Jesus did not pass that guy. He did not leave, did not leave him behind. He cleansed him. Friend, there are so many people around us who are in need of Christ's love and Christ's hope. And as we live with the Christ's love and hope, and we've been blessed with His love by His grace and mercy, His unconditional love, now we got to serve from His love others. So friends, in the beginning, remember I told you, our life would represent His love, God's love. And we needed to see the perfect example, and Christ has shown the perfect example with His word, which was authoritative, we don't have that kind of authority, but as we trust and rely on the Word of God, God will empower us so that we can deliver that life-changing message to other people and Spirit will work through. And our work and responsibility is boldly sharing God's Word, which is life-changing, life-saving, and life-encouraging, like Christ did. We may not personally be able to cast out demons, but as we deliver, as we trust the Lord and His Word, and we boldly speak it out, God will work through. Amen? And we shouldn't be humble. I mean, we shouldn't be like Jewish people. Okay, you know what? We're chosen nations. We shouldn't say that. Yes, I am blessed. 
but I don't deserve any of these blessings. I am blessed because I received the grace of God. And I want you, brother, I want you, sister, to experience the same grace and mercy. But all you have to do is humble. But you are not forcing others to be humble. You be humble before God and God will use you so powerfully and let you focus on not anything else that will distract you but the purpose of God in your life, for your life. And lastly, of course, God is calling us to compassionate as He was compassionate. If God was negligent about us, there's no way we can actually exist right now here. But just like God would pay attention to a leper who came before Him when leper could be isolated from all society because lepers were considered the people who were cursed. But the very person who thought to be cursed was healed by Christ Jesus, about whom people started believing He's the Messiah. So friends, God is calling us to be compassionate to other people as well. And Jesus Christ, just like I explained to you, had shown the perfect example of love by speaking the truth, proclaiming the Word of God, and being humble, being focused on His mission, and being compassionate. So friends, people may know that we are Christian, but I don't know if they see us as a real Christian. If you call yourself Christian, you should really think about becoming a real Christian. And how we can be a real Christian, we just learned today. And friends, it's okay. You may fail. You may not even be interested about it. But I want you to remember, once for all, that God loved you so much, so He called you. And you are now reconciled to God's family. And now He's calling you to reveal His love to others as well and to reveal Jesus Christ, that He wasn't merely a person, but He was the Savior who came down to the earth to offer Himself as a sacrifice, ultimate remedy to our sinful dilemma. And He once for, resolved it once for all. And now He's asking us, the ones who are saved by His sacrificial death, to call others to life. Friends, I really hope that you and I, we can be filled with the joy of salvation at all times. Regardless of this situation, I think we should be thankful to the Lord that we can still serve Him, we can still worship Him. Because there are so many people who live without the hope of Christ and they're lost. And now is the moment when we can really reach out to them. If you have a hard time to do how to reach out to people, I mean, with a hard time with reaching out others, that's fine. First, you should establish the close relation with God. Just remember what you learned today, that God is love, and that love has been revealed through Christ and His life to us. And now we are saved. We should also represent that love, humility, and compassion to others. That's it for today. Let's pray. Dear loving God, our Father, we come before you and we want to thank you for this opportunity to learn that how Christ Jesus in his life, through his ministry, had revealed your love, Father. We want to boldly rely on your word, the truth, the life-changing, life-encouraging, and life-inspiring word. And also we want to deliver the word to others because we know that the Word will change their lives and turn themselves to Christ Jesus, our Savior. Allow us to be humble as Christ was, so that we may not rely on ourselves, our knowledges, experiences, or anything we can see materially. Or rather, let us and allow us and lead us to rely on the Holy Spirit who guides us and who indwells in us and allows us to know what is your will the way how we are supposed to present ourselves to others in order to represent who you are and also allow us to have compassion at heart lord we don't want to be negligent or careless about others who, who are in need of savior 
Let us just follow you at all time, Lord, even in this time of hardship. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name and pray. Amen. Friends, now it's time for announcement. Plug into Jesus, 7 p.m. every Friday. Uh, this week, we're going to start Lesson 5. We are appreciated in Christ based on the book of Ephesians chapter 1. We're continuing this teaching series on Christian identity. So please stay plugged and stay connected. Second, Good Tree Youth Sunday online service we just had. Um, uh, the video is uploaded uh, by 8 a.m. every Sunday. Uh, so please go to our KCQ Youth Group Good Tree on KCQ NY YouTube channel. It might be a little confusing for you to find them, but once you learn, it's easy. Offering box, please. I'll just go through really quick. But remember, offering is about giving your heart to God. It's not about giving a little portion of your money. So uh, make it, make sure that offering is a solid and a proper part of your worship. Uh, Good Tree Youth Announcement Room. So I've been using Kakao Talk like for the last two weeks. I did notice that many of you guys check and follow those messages, but also say at the same time, many of you guys don't actually read the message, but make sure you check the cat talk room on a regular basis so that you should be or stay connected with us and stay communicated all the things that are going on with our ministry or within our church or within our youth group. Number five, Sunday group Bible study. Um, it was resumed last week. Uh, it's going to continue from now on. So please stay alert, uh, stay connected with your teachers as they will announce the topics and meeting times. And it's important that you guys actually always stand by and waiting for their calls. Okay. And enjoy your time with your students. I mean, with your friends and your teacher. Uh, weekly devotion GPS, God's pointing and showing. Friends, not gonna lie, it was a little tough for me to uh, record the video every day, uh, except Monday and Saturday, but actually it was really enjoyable for me because I personally can uh, really dig in the Word so that I can deliver those words to you guys, uh, which I believe it would be helpful for you to do your QTs. So friends, just stay connected as well through that uh, and really hope that you guys will find time uh, within the day uh, to open up the file and spend like five to seven minutes uh, to 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 listen to watch the video, and hopefully it will be encouraging to you doing in doing your QTs every single day. Uh, seventh, watch five minute Mother's Day message. Um, thankfully, a lot of you guys have sent me uh, photos, and with the help of our student leaders team, uh, uh, we could create a video, and with that video and the five minute message, we simply want to uh, express our appreciation to our mothers. And it's important that you say thank you to your mom and give her a hug and do something for your mom as this is a special day for our mothers, okay? And don't forget to watch the five minute uh, message and the video that we had prepared to honor our mothers today. That's it for today. Let's just recite uh, the Lord's Prayer and complete our worship before God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for being with me and with all of us in this service. Hopefully you guys were encouraged and fed with the word of the Lord. If you guys have any question, please contact me. Don't hesitate. I'm here to support you and help you in finding God's word and understanding it and his will to your life. So enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you guys. Bye.